Okay, so this is the consensus for our weight versus mass lab. And what we found is that when we graphed the weight as a function of the mass, when we plotted our points, it turned out to be a straight line. And these are all the different groups. Plotting the force of gravity as a function of mass. Here's the slope. And the slope has units of newtons per kilogram. So 9 newtons of force for every kilogram of mass. 10 newtons of force for every kilogram of mass. And these are all the different groups. And it averaged out to be 9.8 newtons per kilogram. And in fact, that is the correct value for the strength of Earth's gravity. We can say that the force of gravity acting on an object, that is the object's weight, is equal to 9.8 newtons of force for every kilogram of mass times the mass. Now notice that if you give me a mass in kilograms, the kilograms will cancel the kilograms, giving me newtons of weight, which is what it should be. Now. We've seen this number 9.8 before, haven't we? 9.8 what? Meters per second squared. And this was for a for something that was in free fall, right? But when we're holding, when you add your spring scale, and let me draw a little picture of it. Here's your little spring scale. Here's a little slot and the tabs in it. And you have this and you have it hooked right here to our, our kilogram of mass, this thing was just hanging there, wasn't it? This object was not accelerating. It was not accelerating at 9.8 meters per second squared. So this 9.8 here means something different. We have a name for it. It's called, well, we call it G. We use the letter G to represent it. And it is called the gravita gravitational field strength. It's the gravitational field strength. Now, you've heard of force fields before. You know, like in science fiction, they're always dealing with force fields. Well, in reality, there are force fields. Um, and you live in one. You walk around in one all day long. That is Earth's gravitational field. Gravity pulls, if you're close to the Earth's surface, gravity pulls on everything with 9.8 newtons of force for every kilogram of mass. Now, if you go to the moon, the gravitational field is going to be much weaker. It's about something like 1.6 newtons of force for every kilogram of mass. Um, on the Jupiter, on you know different planets, whatever, there's different strengths of gravitational field. If you're in Earth orbit, it turns out the strength of Earth's gravity is about 8.9 newtons per kilogram. So there is gravity. It's pretty strong, too, out there in Earth orbit. It's just you're in free fall. So if I were to draw a free body diagram of this guy right here, I would see this. I would see, um, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to call this the force of gravity, which is equal to m times g. Now, we, we have up here, we have g times m, but it's, it's normally written as m times g. So just get used to that. The mass times the gravitational field strength. And then we're holding it up like this, and this is the force of the spring. Mm. <coughs> Let me separate this. This is, this is my free body diagram of the mass. So gravity pulls it down, and the spring scale pulls it up. And is this object accelerating while it's hanging there in the air? No, which means that there can be no net force acting on it. 
which means that the spring scale, the, the force the spring scale exerts has to be equal to the weight, to the force of gravity pulling it down. And, uh, and that's how we know what it weighs. That's why how, when you actually put something on a spring scale, okay, you're, you're, you are measuring the weight because if this object is not accelerating, then this force has to be the same as this force. But what if I had an object that was in free fall? What if I had an odd, you know, my mass, what if I dropped that, that big one kilogram mass? So here's my one kilogram mass, and here's the hook, but I, it, it falls off or something the, uh, from the spring scale. What's the only force acting on it now? This is the force of gravity. And it's the only force acting, isn't it? And when, you, when it's the only force acting, it is the net force acting on it. Now there is a net force, isn't there? And that net force is going to cause that object to accelerate. So this force of gravity is going to be equal to the net force. But we just said that the force of gravity is equal to the mass of an object times the strength of gravity, the gravitational field strength, 9.8 newtons per kilogram. But the net force is equal to, what do you, what do you guys, look up here. Dagny, look up here. The gravity force, mg, is equal to the net force, which is ma. Now, what do we notice about this equation, about the mass? Yeah. Yes, A and G are equal to each other because the mass, what? Cancels out of the equation. Now, this is a profound idea. The acceleration due to gravity is equal to the gravitational field strength. Mass cancels out. In other words, the acceleration of gravity does not depend on the mass of the object. This is what our theory is telling us here. The acceleration due to gravity is equal to 9.8, but this 9.8 from this G here was newtons per kilogram. What are the units for acceleration? Meters per second squared. Are they the same? Do newtons per kilogram, will that give us meters per second squared? Well, 9.8, what is a Newton? A Newton, as we said before, is a kilogram meter per second squared. That's what one Newton is. Well, if I divide that by a kilogram from here, the kilograms cancel and I'm left with meters per second squared, the units for acceleration. In other words, Newtons per kilogram is equivalent to meters per second squared. They're compatible. They're the same thing. So this is why objects um, fall with the same acceleration regardless of their mass. Now, people a long time ago believed heavy things fall faster than lighter things. Right? Mm -hmm. Why do heavy things sometimes fall faster than, than light things? If I drop a book and a piece of paper, why will the book hit the ground faster than the piece of paper? Is it because the book has more mass? No, it's because of wind resistance, resistance by the air. Okay, so uh, if you neglect wind resistance, then it won't matter. They'll fall at the same rate. This happened with Apollo on Apollo 15. An astronaut named Dave Scott brought a feather and a hammer with him to the moon. On Earth, if he dropped the hammer and the feather, the hammer would obviously hit the ground first, and the feather would slowly drift to the ground. On the moon, he dropped the feather and the hammer at the same time, and guess what? They hit the ground at the same time. Why? Because on the moon, there's no air. Okay, so 
the acceleration of gravity due to gravity is equal to the gravitational strength that we measured today. That's it.